So today we are going to work some more on oxidation reduction. Um, you may remember that last class we talked about assigning oxidation numbers. Um, the most important thing to remember is if it's a pure element, the oxidation number is zero. Uh, if it's an ion, the oxidation numbers will add up to the charge on the ion. And the one that kind of dictates everything else the highest and the hierarchy of oxidation reduction is oxygen. And in a compound, oxygen is negative to 99% of the time. And you will use it to figure out the oxidation number of other elements in that compound. So we practiced that last class. Um, before we start this, make sure that you know what you're doing with the oxidation reduction numbers that you assign. But today we're gonna to talk about how you actually use those oxidation numbers to figure out where electrons are moving in oxidation reduction reactions. So let me go to our... So when you have an oxidation reduction reaction, uh, the first thing you do is assign oxidation numbers, but then you actually split the reaction into its half reactions. Uh, and usually one of them will show that there is an element that is gaining electrons and one that is losing electrons. So what the heck do we mean by this? Well, let's look at some of the examples that we have on the redox um, sheet here. Uh, let's look at number four. So if you look at number four here, I'm gonna actually copy that onto a sheet of paper and we're gonna show how you can look at the oxidation numbers and then figure out, actually, I think I'm gonna start with this one because it's a little more straightforward. And we can figure out uh, what the half reactions are and what's happening with the electrons. So my first one that we're gonna look at, let me take this down to a partial screen and start sharing my um, document camera instead. So the first one we're gonna look at is this one. Manganese two plus plus bismuth four hydroxide goes to permanganate and bismuth three plus. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is assign oxidation numbers. So manganese is just an ion by itself, so it's plus two on this side. And manganese over here, well oxygen, I've got four negative twos, so that would be negative eight. So in order to get back to negative one, this manganese must have an oxidation number of plus seven. So you can see how manganese went from plus two to plus seven. Let's look at bismuth now. Let me see, if I tilt this just a little. So for bismuth, uh, if this uh, two oxygens would be negative two apiece, so negative four, so this bismuth is plus four. And then of course this bismuth is plus three because it's just an ion by itself. So now I'm gonna split these into half reactions. So one of my half reactions is the one where manganese is losing electrons. Why do I say it's losing electrons? Well, it's getting more positive. And then my other half reaction is my half reaction with bismuth. Bismuth is gaining electrons. Why do I say that? Well, it's getting less positive. The first kind of oxidation reduction reaction we're gonna work is called an oxidation reaction I'm sorry, oxidation reduction reaction that happens in acid. Um, you'll explain what that, I'll explain a little bit more about what that means later. Um, but the first thing that you do 
is you make sure that your primary atoms are balanced. In other words, I've got one manganese on this side, one manganese on that side, one bismuth, one bismuth. So those are good. So how do I balance the oxygens? Well, in oxidation reduction reactions, you balance the oxygens by adding waters to the opposite side. So for example, here I have four oxygens. So I'm going to add four waters to this side. Now I've got four oxygens and four oxygens. So what will I have to do on this side? Well, I'll have to add waters to the side without any oxygen. Oops, yeah. So I have two oxygens, so I'll need two waters. The problem is once I add those waters, I now have extra hydrogens. So after you've added the waters, you now add H pluses, like you have in acids, to balance out the hydrogen. So four times two, I have eight hydrogens. So I'll add eight hydrogens to that side to balance it. And then on this one, I've got four hydrogens. So I'll have to add four hydrogens to this side to balance it. So just to reiterate, I now have four times two, eight hydrogens, and eight hydrogens, four times one oxygen, four oxygens and four oxygens, and one manganese on each side. Here I had a bismuth on each side, two oxygens there, two oxygens there, four hydrogens and four hydrogens. So my half reactions are now balanced. So the thing I need to look at next before I try to put them back together is how many electrons moved. And so <clears throat> the way we figure that out is by looking at my two oxidation members. So electrons are negative. So what I would have to do to balance my plus two to plus seven is a negative five on this side would make my oxidation numbers equal out to both plus two. So you always add electrons to the side that has a more positive oxidation number. So this is plus two, this is plus seven. If each electron is negative one, how many electrons will I need? I'll need five, right? If I add five electrons here, the five electrons are negative, so five negative ones, you add that to the plus seven, I'm at plus two, which is what I need my oxidation numbers to equal out to. Over here, it's a little easier, right? This one's plus four, this one's plus three, so I need to add, sorry, I always do this to run out of space. I need to add one electron to that side because the one electron plus the added to the plus four makes this side plus three, which equals the plus three there. The reason that we're showing it that way is because ultimately what happened is an electron joined to this to get to plus three. What happened here is that five electrons were lost in order to get to the plus seven. So we show that the five electrons have separated off. Now the reason that matters is that in order to balance these, the half reactions have to show the electrons canceling out. In other words, if this one is losing five electrons, they have to go somewhere. Electrons don't just move without provocation. So they're gonna have to be absorbed by this half reaction. So the last thing that we do is we multiply the, the half reactions in order to get the electrons to cancel. You notice I have five electrons on the right here. I need this one to have five electrons on the left. Think about it, you've never seen a chemical reaction that shows electrons. That's because we always, the way that they react is in such a way to cause the electrons to cancel out. So I'm gonna need to multiply this half reaction by five. So when I do that, I will now have five electrons plus 20 hydrogens plus five bismuth four oxides going to five bismuths and 10 waters. Now I can actually recombine my two half reactions to get one mammoth reaction. So let's see what that would look like. On the left, I'm gonna have four waters plus manganese 
plus, now I'm not going to write my electrons because they will cancel, plus uh, 20 hydrogens plus 5 bismuth oxides. That's everything on the left, right? That, 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 that. And then on the right, I'm going to have my manganese. I'm sorry, my permanganate plus eight hydrogens plus five bismuths plus ten waters. Now, one thing you'll notice at this point is that I've got waters on both sides and hydrogen ions on both sides. So I'm going to want to cancel those out. So what I can do is I can subtract four waters from each side. That'll get rid of the waters here, and that'll make this one, when I subtract 10 minus four, this one's at six. And then here, I'm going to subtract eight hydrogens from each side. So I'm gonna subtract those, and then 20 minus eight is 12. So my final reaction is Mn2 plus, plus 12 hydrogens, plus five bismuth four hydroxides, go to a permanganate, plus five bismuth, plus six waters. And it's always a good, it's always uh, good to go back and double check that your, that your elements balance out. So I've got one manganese, one manganese, 12 hydrogens, six times two, 12 hydrogens, five bismuths, five bismuths, 10 oxygens, and I've got six oxygens here plus four more there, 10 oxygens. And that is a balanced oxidation reduction reaction. So let's go ahead and kind of let you start by trying one that's a little simpler. Um, I'm going to try the first one on the back of redox number two on the right. Uh, that's going to be, um, let me get this down so I can see what you're seeing. That is going to be the Fe2 plus and ClO3 one minus going to Fe3 plus and Cl1 minus. So pause this for a second and see if you can assign oxidation numbers. I'm assuming you paused it and now you're back. The oxidation numbers you should have had are this iron is plus two and this iron is plus three. That one's super straightforward since they're just irons. This chlorine is negative one. This chlorine, let's see, three negative twos would be negative six. So this chlorine has to be plus five in order to get to end up at negative one. So uh, see if you can now separate this into half reactions. You may want to pause this for a sec. So once you have separated into half reactions, hopefully you did it this way. Iron two plus going to iron three plus, and then chlorate going to the chloride ion. Notice that um, even though oxygen does have an oxidation number, because it didn't change, I'm not worrying about it. I'm just leaving it. Because you're really only focusing on thinking about the oxidation numbers of what's changing. So this first one is super easy to balance, right? We've got one iron two plus, one iron three plus. So think for a second, which side are we gonna add the electron to? Well, in this scenario, this is plus two plus three. So if I add a negative electron to this side, then plus three and negative one are plus two. So now my oxidation numbers are balanced. This one is plus five and negative one. So I'm going to have to add six electrons on this side 
because this, remember electrons are negative, so this would be the equivalent of negative six and positive five gives us negative one. Sorry if that five is not horribly legible. So remember, this side is done, right? We, all of, we just had irons, they're balanced. So how do we balance oxygens again? By adding waters to the flip side. So I'm gonna add three waters here, and I'm going to add, now I'll balance the hydrogens by adding six hydrogens here. So take a second and look at that and make sure it all makes sense. My chlorines were already balanced. To get my oxygens to three on the flip side, I added three waters. Then because I added waters, I now have hydrogens. So I added six hydrogens to the left. So the last thing we have to do is to consider how we're gonna have to multiply our half reactions to get our electrons to balance out. Um, one really good kind of intermediate way to check your work is you do always wanna make sure your electrons are on opposite sides. If somehow you have electrons that are both on the product side or both on the reactant side, it means that you misplaced your electrons. They have to be on flip sides. So here you see it's on the product side and then on this half reaction, it's on the reactant side. So all we have to do to finish this is I need to get this up to six electrons so it'll cancel out those. So I'll multiply this half reaction by six. So this would be six Fe2 plus going to six Fe3 plus plus six electrons. So now I'm ready to put it together. So I've got my six iron two pluses and my six hydrogen ions and my chlorate ion going to six iron three pluses plus chloride ion and three waters because my electrons canceled out. So just double checking, I've got uh, six irons, six hydrogens, one chlorine, three oxygens and three oxygens. Balanced, bam. So, um, I'd like you to go ahead and try, let me share a different page for a second. I'd like you to go ahead and try uh, to do number two next and on your own, and then I will show you the answer. Um, I hope this has been informational and uh, we'll work some more of these together in class.